governments the world over have an array of policy tricks up their sleeves, ready to pluck out in order to attract multinationals to their countries. Tax breaks, light regulation, new transport infrastructure and many more. The problem is that there's not a lot of evidence to say which, if any of them, actually work. And the key is being able to demonstrate that policy really works when compared to doing nothing. That's where our research steps in. Our approach is based on defining counterfactuals, i.e. scenarios that describe what would have happened if no measure were put in place. This enables us to isolate the effect of the policy from any other element which may affect its impact. Now, let's take a look at one of the main ways countries and regions try to bring in investment promotion agencies. And then let's look at a tool to embed investments in regions targeted subsidies for firms. Investment promotion agencies exist around the world to try and attract foreign investors either on behalf of a whole country or a city or a region, solving problems for investors, lobbying policymakers, running ad campaigns or even actively seeking out investors. We built the very first census of all national and regional investment agencies across Europe to get a real sense of how effective they are, comparing the sectors and regions of an economy where an agency is actively seeking investment with those where it is not. We gather data by sending out a survey to all investment agencies and perform rigorous counterfactual analysis. Our key finding is that agencies work Regardless of what kind of region they are set up in, they bring more foreign companies and more investment. Great, right? Well, there's a catch. If investment agencies working for different regions in the same country are competing for the attention of foreign investors, there's a chance one's victory will just be another's loss. And this can turn into a zero-sum game. FDI will just be redistributed rather than being brought in totally fresh. Nevertheless, this is still encouraging. We now know one valuable and reliable way to bring in investment, and we also know what are the pitfalls to avoid when using this policy tool. But that's not the end of the story. Unless these outside firms build new links with local ones, the benefits will be negligible. So what does it take to bring about collaboration? This is where our new evidence comes in about a key policy tool leveraging collaboration between firms. We took our work down to the micro level and looked at the 1 billion euro public subsidies program in Italy's less developed regions. The program was designed to foster innovative investment based on collaborative projects between all types of firms, including domestic and foreign. Importantly here, much of this money has been given out on the condition that firms work together. So, does this incentive pay off when innovative multinationals collaborate with the local firms? Unfortunately, not really. Many of the most innovative firms involved just crowd out their investment. That is, they take the money from the subsidy and then cut that amount from the investment they were already going to do. And what's more is that there is no significant effect on the largest multinationals. They just don't react anywhere near as much as hoped. Participation into collaborative projects is expensive indeed for multinationals in terms of bureaucratic and transaction costs. Therefore, when they collaborate, they divert resources away from the core innovative activities. Our work has shed light on the role that policies might play in driving the match between firms and locations. By bringing in brand new data and adopting our novel approach through counterfactual analysis, we are making the key steps towards getting rid of the white elephants and finding evidence for solutions that work.